Uh, I'm Brian Chase, Director of Global Communications for Bell Helicopter. Uh, we're here today to uh, get you an update on the V-280 aircraft and Team Valor, in particular the team that is pulling this entire uh, project together. Uh, with us today, you've got Keith Flail, who is our Vice President for Advanced Tilt Rotor Systems uh, at Bell, and, and, uh, and, and includes the, including the V-280 program. Uh, we also have uh, Rita Flaherty, who's Vice President of Business Development for uh, Lockheed Martin Missiles and Fire Control. Uh, we also have uh, Christy Kondraudis, uh, who is uh, Senior Vice President for Spirit Defense, uh, and Charlie King, who is the Army Military Account Manager uh, for Eaton. Uh, this obviously will be an on-the-record uh, briefing. Uh, we will uh, have each person uh, provide a few minutes of opening comments, uh, and that will be very brief. Then we'll have a chance for Q&A if you'd like to do that. What I will ask is that everyone uh, will ask one question, one follow-up, to make sure we can get through it anyone who wants to do that. Then at the end, if there's additional folks who want to ask questions, we'll come back around to you. So I'm going to turn it at this point over to uh, Keith Flail. Hello, I'm uh, Keith Flail, Vice President for Advanced Tilt Rotor Systems. The, uh, what you see in front of you here today is the uh, full-scale mock-up of the V-280 Valor aircraft, which is our uh, entry into the joint multi-role tech demonstrator effort with the United States Army, a science and technology effort to reduce risk and inform requirements for future vertical lift. Uh, very exciting here today at the Association of the United States Army meeting in D.C. Uh, we also today, and we'll put this out after the, uh, uh, after the event, we have live video of the aircraft that is out in Amarillo, Texas. It is now um, running at 100% RPM, all engines operating as we continue through our uh, test phase, doing our ground runs, doing all of our test points, leading up to uh, first flight this fall. Uh, what we have here is really an unprecedented uh, opportunity in terms of reducing risk and informing requirements uh, for the future vertical lift program. We've now been at this uh, with our teammates uh, for over five years now. It's going to be seven years by the time we're done as we set the conditions for a successful future vertical lift program. Uh, joining us today, we have representatives of three of our teammates. You can see all 11 on the door here uh, with the Lockheed Martin, Spirit, <coughs> and uh, Eaton. Um, Again, for the, for the program itself, uh, executing incredibly well. We're very excited uh, for first flight coming up this fall and uh, really a, 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 a tremendous opportunity, the opportunity that we have. Uh, with that, uh, I will turn the uh, – actually, before I say that, I really want to give a, a, a shout-out to the, to the teammates here. Uh, it really has been uh, an incredible uh, team. The synergy that we've had with all of these industry partners working together in this effort, bringing their best and brightest, bringing their investment, uh, their talent to this, to this effort, along with our partners with the United States government, it really has been a, a fantastic team. When you can have uh, an aircraft like this where you have the fuselage uh, manufactured and assembled in Kansas, the wing done in Texas, and the nacelle on the wingtips uh, done in Israel by IAI, and then all of those parts, the way that they come together in this digital environment, it's really unprecedented in terms of the efficiency that we've achieved uh, as a team working together. Uh, so with that, I'll hand it off to Rita Flaherty from uh, Lockheed Martin for some comments. Thank you very much. I'm Rita Flaherty from Lockheed Martin Missiles and Fire Control. I just want to say how proud that Lockheed Martin is to have the opportunity to partner with Bell. We've been on the Bell team since 2013, um, so we've been there all along as this platform has gone from design phase to paper to a, a real life flying uh, aircraft demonstrator now. We're providing uh, a technology that leverages some of what the best missiles and fire control has to offer. Uh, we've been providing the targeting sensors, the pilotage sensors for the AH-64 Apache since its inception. We've also been providing the targeting sensor for the AH-1 Zulu, also made by Bell Helicopter for the U.S. Marine Corps and its international customers. So we have a very long history of providing targeting, situational awareness, and pilotage sensors to our customers throughout the world. And we're looking forward to doing that on the V-280. So for this platform, we've uh, created a new sensor called PDAS, the Pilotage and Distributed Aperture Sensor System. And as the name would imply, it's a distributed aperture sensor system that combines situational awareness, pilotage, and threat warning. It's a next generation leap ahead in technology, and, and we're really enthusiastic to be able to demonstrate this along with the Bell Helicopter team for the V-280. Thanks so much. Thank you, Rita. Hello, everyone. I'm Christy Kondrotis. I'm a SVP of Defense Programs for Spirit Aerosystems, and we're really proud to be part of this team, Team Valor, 
and supporting Bell uh, in the accomplishment, uh, specifically getting to flight test of this platform. So many of you might not know who Spirit Aerosystems is. Uh, unlike many of, uh, of the defense folks who are supporting this platform, we are a commercial company, a commercial tier one global uh, aerostructures company. And really what we bring to this uh, platform and to this team is, aero, is commercial best practices um, from an aerostructures design and manufacturing capability. Uh, we have uh, designed and built the prototype fuselage for this platform. Uh, it's a beautiful fuselage. Uh, you can take a look at that. But also uh, the fact is, is that what we really try to bring is a design for manufacturability to this, um, to this platform so that you can get beyond and know that you're able to manufacture this at, at various rates. Uh, so again, we're proud to be part of this team. Uh, we look forward to supporting Bell and continuing to support them in flight test uh, and um, really looking forward to uh, ensuring that we are contributing as much as we can to make this team successful. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Charlie King. I'm the uh, military account manager for the Army for Eaton. And uh, I'd like to take an opportunity to thank Bell for allowing us to be on Team Valor. And it's a true team that um, is developing this new aircraft for the Army. One of the things that we did was in developing the hydraulic system for this aircraft is that at the very beginning our engineers worked on site and alongside Bell engineers for almost a year in the early stages of development to ensure that design integrity and schedule that uh, could be ma made so that we could uh, end up with a product at the end of the line and uh, avoid any delays and as they've talked lately, they're planning on uh, trying to push this forward ahead. Uh, and I think that speaks to that teamwork that allows that to move forward. You know, we in that developmental process, we're providing hydraulic pumps, reservoirs, actuators, various co conveyance products that come from various different plants within Eaton. And again, we're very proud to be part of that teamwork. That's going to help this aircraft to become the new ver vertical lift for the Army, and it'll also be a long legacy of Bell Vertical Lift utilizing Eaton components to support that uh, warfighter in the field with the next future, future Vertical Lift aircraft. And we thank you again for that. Thank you. All right, do we have any, uh, any questions for uh, any of the members of Team Valor? Any questions? Yes, Sarah. Okay, so the question uh, for our, our Facebook audience is, uh, why hasn't it flown yet, uh, and what's the timing on, on first flight? Yeah, so first flight is still this fall. Um, we still maintain that commitment. Uh, after we're done here, you'll see the, the video up on the large screen here showing uh, the ground runs. This most recent footage actually from uh, Saturday with all engines operating up to 100% RPM doing our restrained ground run. Uh, as part of the, the ground run, as part of the test plan, as we execute all of our test points and all of our test cards leading up to first flight. Uh, so we are still uh, on a path for first flight this fall. Uh, everything um, going incredibly well with test. Extremely proud of the team and as, as we continue to execute. Okay, Laura. Okay, so the question is uh, about the Navy and Marine Corps requirement and variant for FVL. Now, as we have continued to say, we see the opportunity here with uh, V280 Valor uh, for future vertical lift, specifically capability set three here, medium class. Uh, aircraft as a multi-mission, multi-service capability, which means it could serve uh, United States Marine Corps, United States Army, Special Operations Command uh, mission sets, including utility mission. As you see, the model set up today on Wednesday, we'll have it in the attack configuration, as well as medevac. Uh, so dependent upon the, the requirements and what variants are desired, we certainly have that experience at Bell Helicopter with the V-22 in terms of a uh, blade fold and wing stow. Uh, the opportunity with the, with the V-280, because of its incredible speed and range, you can actually put a tank inside the cabin and fly from the west coast 
all the way to Hawaii without having to uh, refuel or put it inside of another airplane. So uh, do you want aerial refuel? Do you want to put a tank in the back? Do you want it to fold? We have all of those opportunities and all those option, options for our government customers. Yes. So the question is uh, for a medevac configuration and how many litters, how many staff, what kind of equipment could you put in there in the, in the cabin? So we have shown that in the past, uh, a mock-up configuration here where we have six litters and four spots for uh, ambulatory patients. Uh, a multitude of configurations that we've looked at as we've discussed this with the medevac community in terms of what's desired for a surgical suite. Uh, so there, there are a lot of different options there. We see this again as a uh, Swiss Army knife in terms of reconfigurability dependent upon the missions that are desired. Any other uh, questions? Oh, yes. One. So questions on uh, refuel uh, requirements for the aircraft and range. Uh, like a lot of things, it's an it depends answer. Uh, because you could have an aerial refueling capability, which we've shown, the ability to put a tank in the back, where you can have literally 2,100 nautical miles of range just without any refuel, without any aer aerial refuel, just by putting the tank in the aircraft. Uh, and if you want an aerial, ref aerial refuel, you could tank as you're going across the ocean. So it's really, the, the options are, are truly limitless. Absolutely. That's a, that's a great point. Uh, when you, the majority of the flight profile for this aircraft is very similar to a turboprop airplane. So the way you see it right now in the, in the VTOL mode, vertical takeoff and lift helicopter mode, uh, it, it's, it's in helicopter mode, very limited. As soon as you get up and you get airspeed, you're rotating over and you're getting that efficiency like a turboprop airplane. That's how you get the speed. That's how you get the range because you're riding on the wing. Okay. Any other questions? All right, well, if not, thank you for joining us. Uh, we have uh, additional content if you need uh, additional material. We also have press kits available. Uh, if you don't already have one of those, we can provide that for you as well. Thank you very much for joining us. Bye-bye.